Chest Hello, everybody, and welcome to Chess Diagnostic. This is Andrew, and I got my coffee, and I got the game up for round three of Taimanov versus Fisher. So this game really was the turning point of the match midway through. Uh, Taimanov gained a slight advantage, and he really misevaluated his position, thought he was winning, uh, but actually Fisher had an advantage at the point he thought he was winning. Uh, and then he went on to lose, of course. So let's see what happens. Fisher's black, and I'm just going to breeze through this opening here because I already covered it in the last game, um, or game one, I guess. D4, knight to F6, and then C4. After G6, we're going into another King's Indian defense. And knight to C3, bishop to G7, E4, D6, knight to F3, castles, bishop d2, so all just standard developing moves. Uh, e5, I made an analysis note on that already. Castles, and then knight to c6. So after d5, knight back, bishop to d2, preparing rook to c1 and playing on the queen side, knight to e8. So Fisher's going to play the standard f5, uh, going for a kingside expansion, and Taimanov varies with, after rook to c1 and f5, queen to b3. So he wanted to play a little more aggressively and dynamically in this game, apparently. He wanted to go all out and try to win. Uh, the problem, though, is that he started misevaluating or overestimating his chances in this game. And it was probably psychological, rather. Uh, but he said that after he lost this game, he was pretty much broken. And We'll see how computers uh, really help us to evaluate these kind of positions nowadays and give us opportunities to better understand the dynamic nature of games like this. So after queen to b3, uh, obviously black is wanting to play something like, or I mean white is wanting to play something like c5 and just attacking on this diagonal as well. Fisher actually plays b6, a somewhat weakening move, but it's very logical because it protects that uh, b7 pawn and as compared to the last game where Fisher didn't move the the b pawn to b6 uh, white actually took it and black did get some activity on the b file but he really wanted to prevent that and just play more stably in this game takes takes after knight to g5 going for a similar variation uh, because black has advanced the pawns white wants to occupy obviously the e6 square uh, but really the, the problem with that is that we get this weak pawn of white, which black can attack. And the benefit in this position is that black has already played b6, so there's no pawn trade if he does play that. And that's the reason Taimanov doesn't go for knight to e6. We see Fisher just bring that knight back into play. And here's where the misevaluation starts. So Taimanov really should understand, and I'm not critiquing Taimanov, I'm just showing uh, the computer's evaluation and how we can understand it. So obviously black is playing the king's Indian defense. He has all his minor pieces and he's cramped. So what does white want to do? He wants to eliminate as many trades as possible. He doesn't want to just trade down because that would make black's position actually better. Uh, he's lacking in space and white has a space advantage. So what he does in his attempt to attack is he actually just lets black trade all of his pieces get active and maintain an advantage. So after f4, we see a few trades, h6, trying to chase that knight back. And actually after pawn takes, pawn takes, the best move for white is knight to f3. So why knight to f3? So the, the interesting thing in this position is that Taimanov goes for c5, complicating the game and trying, as I said, to attack on this uh, light square long diagonal with the queen. But the problem with that is that it forces a bunch of trades. And the tactics don't really work out in this position. So obviously Taimanov was miscalculating through all these games, uh, but just from a general strategic understanding point of view, he doesn't want to play any variations that favor trading of pieces. So in this position, I analyzed knight to f3 and the line that I saw, which wasn't necessarily suggested by the computer as the first line, but makes perfect sense, is black has a bunch of weaknesses. So these two pawns, this weakness on h6, 
um, as well as these light square weaknesses. So if the bishops traded, then black would just stand really worse for an endgame. So he really wants to eliminate as many peace trades and just kind of take a slow game and try to outplay black with weaknesses. So the line after knight to g6, which is basically forced because the e5 pawn was attacked, he could play rook to d1. And then, well, actually, this is the computer line. But what I was thinking of was knight back. And if he plays e4, then we get something like g3. And now the knight comes in to occupy all these weaknesses. And he really stands better uh, at this point in the game. So the issue with these pawns is that after the knight back, if one advances, then the other square becomes available as a weakness for white to attack. So e4 really is the move suggested by the computer in this position uh, as the best move. And that plan for white is very simple with g3 and really he could take his time and he even has time for uh, c5. So we don't see that. Uh, obviously, Taimanov misevaluated this position. He played c5. And we see just trade offs. Knight takes, knight takes. And black is starting to actually have an advantage in this position. Uh, Taimanov thought he was getting more, ac more activity for his rook, but it doesn't make sense because the knight's attacked. It has to go back. Um, and if Fisher plays very patiently, white will just stand worse. So after pawn takes, and then basically the A pawn uh, has to take because he wants to play C6 to protect that knight in case of bishop to C4. But after rook to C6 preventing that, uh, this bishop can't come in. And if the bishop tries to... So uh, king to H8 is the only move. But if the bishop tries to come in, then we see knight to E6. And of course, we don't want to play here. Knight takes F8, wins a rook. Uh, so if he just takes the knight, then actually it's white who's more active. But this is if uh, Bobby Fischer didn't play accurately. So there's a lot of tactical variations where black could go wrong, but you don't really want to rely on your opponent playing a mistake. So let's see the strongest line here. So king to h8, and now bishop to c4 isn't even an option. Uh, the knight has to go back. And actually, now black is getting active. And this rook, if it doesn't just simply go back and admit its mistake of playing rook to c6, uh, it can start to get trapped. So Taimanov makes another error playing rook to g6. And actually, after knight to f4, uh, bishop takes. Now these pawns are covering all the squares of the rook. And it's starting to run out of space. <laughs> That's not the move. So af actually, after uh Activating the rook, queen d7, attacking the bishop, protecting the bishop with an attack on the queen, and then check. So king to f1, um, if the king goes back, then it's basically the same as uh, king to f1, but the problem is now back uh, rank threats start to come into play for white. Activating the rook, trade, trade. And now uh, black has a huge advantage because... He has the two bishops, he's more active, and he's going to control all the important files and squares. All right, so queen check, up, and now actually with bishop back, the bishop's going to come in, and it's white who's suddenly defending. So we see b4, and actually uh, Bobby Fischer plays bishop to e4, but an actually a better idea would be something like bishop to d5, attacking the rook, and then with c6, uh, this queen is completely cut off from everything, and now it's even easier to attack. Uh, but after a few moves, we see a tactical mistake by Taimanov. We see rook to e8, uh, basically blundering the queen with a fork. So you can see even the world's top grandmasters make mistakes in basic tactics when they're under pressure. And that's what Bobby Fischer was expert at, was... Uh, putting tons of pressure on his opponents in a very simple and logical way until they just broke. So after the queen takes, this game is basically over. Rook takes. And now black just starts consolidating, protecting all his pieces and pawns, um, as well as attacking that pawn. So after a few moves, 
bishop up attacking the knight attacking that pawn but then he consolidates further with bishop to e5 consolidating his own pawn but at this point um, white's just lost because there's no coordination between his pieces his rook can't easily get into the game and really after well, the rook goes back we see bobby start to break open the position with f3 trade after queen to g7 we see further trades and then after the knight takes I can't remember I think um, I, st I kept analyzing this game but I think the game ended at move 42 so after Queen takes e2 um, Taimanov resigned and he had lost three games in a row so why did he resign well obviously the coordination's pretty bad the knight could take on c7 um, and then we just see something like Queen check and then he'd play well this is just my analysis but he could play f4 he's gonna win this f3 pawn and just push these pawns and even win the knight so an example line would be check check of course if the king goes here I'll just play check forking the knight and the king and if he just uh, moves the king over we see king and then f3 he'll even threaten mate and this pawn is gonna queen the Jill went up the hill Jack and Jill fishing 